little update little 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 update you remember i was talking before about fear of Warren and the king and stink and i had my theories as to why he left i think one of my theories i had was that i felt like maybe fear of Warren felt like he was he was between a rock and a hard place in terms of the drama occurring between brendan Schub and bobby lee then I said, oh, maybe he just didn't like the show and it was taking too much of his time and he didn't, you know, know how to say no because he doesn't like confrontation, blah, 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 blah. Many theories kind of threw out there. But now, um, when I was listening to the first part of Fear of Vaughan interviewing Ari Shafir, which has been really good, by the way, I haven't watched Ari Shafir special yet, but so far I've watched like three of his podcast appearances and he has absolutely smashed them out of the park like he has done really really well promoting these flipping special and really brought the fucking funnies on the podcast interviews and i think a lot of people are saying the same thing like people actually like him now he's come across really likable really personable um on these podcast appearances so definitely check him out on all these shows that he's on but i haven't i haven't flipping checked it out yet but people are saying it's really good yeah you see even yonjio is saying the special is good so i should fear and fear of one are talking and now there's a different theory as to why Fia Vaughan may have left King of the Stink. It wasn't anything that I said that I hypothesized or theorized out there. A completely different reason, which is burnout. He might have just got burnt out in terms of doing too many shows, doing too much content, and he just needs to pull back and just focus on the stuff that he was doing, doing his own tours and stuff going forward. And he kind of mentions and talks about it with Irish Shafir because I, uh, I guess, was also going through the same thing in terms of burnout. So very interesting um you know insight from theo here yeah dude <laughs> that was cool man Lots thank ruined you a lot of me but not, not all of it <laughs> um yeah i've been good man just still slowly just getting over i had, i mean my burnout was so bad it's tough to say that to people because yeah. people don't know it but like i couldn't even sit through a conversation well there's a conversation i did with this guy bryce mitchell where i could barely even talk i was just my i mean just got burnout it was just been a slow like you know, every couple of weeks I feel a little bit better. That's I got on like some yeah. peptides and I got like a lot of different vitamins and did that ayahuasca thing to try to get better. I mean, I, try, I was trying everything to kind of, you know, see what was going on. But, yeah, I was telling Bobby he needs to take time off. I was telling him yesterday and I was, he was like, yeah, I'm like, I do this and this. I'm like, dude, you're saying the same thing everyone's saying. And I was saying, I like, you and I were talking about it. Yeah, you and I appreciate you hit me up. You hit me up and say, hey, man, you remind me to take some time off to go do some things for myself. But I said how like the comments were all like, yeah, Theo, go, we'll still be here. Like, go get right. Yeah. The comments weren't like, no, you better not take off. The comments were like shockingly the other way. Yeah, why do you think we forget that feeling then that we can't, uh, that we have to keep going? What do you think some of that comes from? Some of it's the drive within, like to where it's like we had starvation mentality for so long that we're still like, I gotta work, I, I got a job, I got an offer for a gig. And you're like, yeah, those are, we have to be comfortable. Raise poor if you're like, hey, the fucking free d breakfast stops at, at 10. We yeah. got to get down there. And then at some point, you're like, I'll just go buy breakfast, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, all oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't need the Continental. <laughs> like, like you got to just convince yourself that you're you're fine. That's a good point. I think some of that, probably some of that realization too, some of that slowly coming into my own head, like everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know? And yeah, pretty interesting, right? I didn't actually think ever that I would hear him saying it was to do with burnout. I legitimately thought he was annoyed at Brendan or he just didn't like the show anymore or he just felt bad because he's Bobby Lee's friend and it looked like he was siding with Brendan by doing a show with him and stuff. But I guess in general, he just was getting burnt out. But that makes sense because if I remember correctly, I haven't listened to this past weekend in a while or been on the subreddit, but I do remember seeing a few times in the last, what, two years or so, a lot of people complaining that he was canceling shows. So they'd buy tickets on his tour and then he just canceled out of the blue. I think that's the time that tim dylan was doing it also they just kept canceling and i think a couple of times there might have been some rumors about covid but then some people just found out that oh he just you know was in the mood and didn't really feel like doing it or he basically you know stretched himself too thin and he couldn't fulfill some of the dates and he was in a bad place blah 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 which is why maybe he started that whole um ketamine treatment thing that he was doing which is quite interesting but what ari said there was pretty interesting about how the comments on Theo when he basically maybe announced it. I don't know when it happened, but I guess the comments were like quite encouraging and quite supportive in that, yeah, take your time, we'll be here when you come back. That's always been the case when it comes to people who make content because all these guys, they are stand-up comedians, I know. But in general, I think a lot of their fame mostly comes from, maybe their money 
and maybe the majority of money comes from stand up i'm not i'm not doubting that you do a weekend in a in a good location you sell out tickets you sell all the tickets you could probably make i don't know near 50 grand or something which is way more than you're going to make on one video but i feel like they're way more famous because of their podcast so it's if that's the case then people on youtube and content creators they take breaks all the time and for the most part if you got someone that you like that you follow you don't mind waiting for them when they come back so you can watch their video like you will not you will not bad wait but when they put a video out you're definitely going to check it out it's not like you're going to be sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for them to upload but when you see it and you upload for them you're going to straight away click it so this idea that you have to keep feeding the algorithm it doesn't necessarily exist in my opinion i don't think that's actually a thing i think especially if you're a big enough content creator and you've got a big enough library of stuff and you do other appearances you should be pretty much decent you should be okay to take a break and basically recover and kind of go back to your drawing board or do the thing you should do to recharge uh, i think i've got a super chat here it's gonna come through in a minute because my thing's super delayed i don't know why i feel like a lot of these guys are just addicted to the flipping to the race they're addicted to the hustle and some of them also clearly don't really enjoy being at home they don't really like being a family man and hanging out with the kids hanging out with the wife and being a stand-up comedian is a perfect 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 cover for a person who doesn't necessarily want to be at home and wants to be out there living life and kind of you know um having that peter pan thing where you're not really accepting that maybe time has left you by and you're not maybe the guy that you once thought you were that's what kind of stand-up kind of does some of them there you go super chat thank you and joy one for the one dollar super chat i appreciate you brother thank you so much i appreciate you so i honestly think i honestly think that happens a lot with these people i really do think they have this thing where i think that a lot of them have this thing where oh yeah later i see people saying later just peace jess hope, hope you have a good day my love hope you have a good day um i think a lot of these guys really and truly just are addicted to the hustle and some of them probably addicted to the money i'd imagine the money side of things as well could be super addictive because you're get picking up these fifty thousand checks or 30 or 10 even if it's 20 even if it's five every weekend it, all you need to do is add the maths and be like hold on do the maths in your head and be like hold on if i do six dates in a row or if I do like a four month tour, how much could I make? And it suddenly starts to make sense, especially if you add on top of that, doing content anyway, doing some vlogs, doing some guest appearances, another podcast, it can suddenly go up and up and up. So I can understand why it can be really addictive. And of course, if you've got a family, you can do the whole cover of like, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it to provide a better life for them. If I don't work, they don't eat. Oh, you do that whole, that whole thing, that whole front. So it can give you an excuse to basically not be at home with your family and stuff, which they basically need to do. Because a lot of these guys talk about how they're always on the road and they have bad relationships with their wives or with their kids and stuff. And it's really unfortunate because they have the privilege of essentially working working on their own schedule. They can do what they please. They can record when they want. Some of them have a schedule, I know, but they can basically create a life for themselves that kind of work to their benefit like joey diaz says all the time right he spends sundays at home all the time you can do tours from wednesday to flipping saturday and spend the rest of the time with your family it's not difficult but i think a lot of them are this is a hustle a lot of the, the, the money and most of them i think also don't necessarily like being at home what are people saying here um do i really think it's 50k per weekend it says pc la the l a o w or eight sorry yeah definitely I've heard them say that. I've heard I've heard someone mention before that it's anywhere between ten to fifty for a weekend, which is which makes sense, which which is why a lot of the big ones tour so much. Um but Dark of Jess says, yeah, big name comedians, definitely, yep, for sure. Uche says I ran did the math earlier today because Alia sold six thousand two hundred seats the other weekend. And if each ticket is fifty dollars, oh my god. I ran me did the maths today because Chris sold six thousand two hundred tickets um seats sorry the other weekend and if each ticket was fifty dollars that's over three hundred thousand for two shows alone now again he's not going to get that clean we know that he's gonna have to bust that down with his agent manager there's probably a fee to hire the place or whatever else they do there's some sort of split but let's say let's say a reasonable amount let's let's be considerate minimum he's gonna get is a hundred grand <laughs> minimum right even if it's 60 50 70 80 90 he's gonna get minimum of probably 100 grand it makes sense why these guys burn themselves out a little bit it does make sense why they burn themselves out and then also imagine a lot of these guys especially if they've got popular podcasts they're probably selling way more tickets than they would do if they were just straight up comedians because they have other fans they have fans from shows they're on 
some of them they do shows like you know they maybe that was on a tv show they may have done a movie but most of them have podcast fans and stand-up comedy fans so you've got two sets of people coming out to see you that's a lot of people and if you're popular you can actually sell tickets look at the arenas that dave Chappelle and joe rogan do every every time tom segura does Bert does yeah exactly which it doesn't include merch sales like these guys make dough so i understand how you can get burned out if you're a comedian because the rat race or the hustle is so addictive because the gains, the rewards are so amazing, like legitimately amazing. That's life changing money. You're making a hundred grand per weekend. That's not including whatever you make on AdSense on on YouTube, merch. As Fingy Uche mentioned, uh, I don't know other appearances, and other shows, maybe movie projects, TV stuff. Like the money can start adding up really, really, really quickly. So it makes sense because I remember actually recently, wasn't it? Brendan said recently on the Fire and the Kid. I think somebody tried to make a joke oh i didn't know you're still doing comedy and i think he mentioned yeah comedy is my main my main money earner which makes sense right even though brendan's got like what he does like four podcasts and stuff still the main thing that makes the majority or that covers the majority of his kind of bills would definitely be from comedy for sure and he's not even that good right he's not good and he's still probably he's still i'd i'd bet you brendan being as crap as he's a stand-up he's probably still getting 10k a weekend Min i'm saying minimum not the max probably gets more than that but he's probably getting minimum per weekend 10k 100 percent. and some of these rooms he's not filling some of these places he's going to play at they're giving out free tickets they're doing buy one get one free it's like the baby it's not even like he's moving you know moving tickets or you know really selling places out he's not but still he probably gets 10k but the issue with that is i would imagine if you're a promoter if you're a pro yeah, if you're a promoter or if you're a club and you book someone like a Brendan and you think he's going to sell tickets because he's famous on podcasts or because he's friends with Joe Rogan, that he doesn't sell tickets, but you have to pay him still. The issue with that kind of system is that you run out of clubs to basically hustle or to, it's not a scam, but you run out of clubs to hustle where you basically take their money up front. You promise you're going to sell tickets. You don't sell tickets, but then you still perform the show. You take, you know what I mean? So then they won't book you again because they know you're not going to sell the tickets. So you're not going to be able to fulfill the dates. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of a weird situation to be in. So ultimately you need to get more fans, which is probably why he's putting out so many clips. That might explain why he's putting out so many clips. That might explain why he's actually trying to gain um, a new audience and gain new fans because, you know, you need to you need to have more people coming to your shows and attending them to make it make sense. I would imagine you have to have it happen to make sense. 